So learning the motions is probably one of the best things I've ever learned in terms of improving my text editing speed. But if you really want to take it to the next level, you need to avoid some of the following pitfalls. So for number one, you're being overly reliant on HJKL. And this is probably one of the most common mistakes beginners uh, coming from editors where arrow keys are primary navigation, they do that, right? And so while this works, it's probably the least efficient thing you can possibly do if you're adopting the motions. And there are ways to get over it. And so how do you improve on that? Um, you'll need to continuously force yourself to think in terms of better motions. What, by that I mean, instead of thinking by characters or line, think in terms of words. So for example, if you see I'm um, in this line here, just some random Go code, you can press W and just jump words, for example, or B, jump backward, right? And you can even do something like jump in terms of paragraphs, or in this case, it's just like the empty um, lines between functions, or specific targets. So let's say I'm here and I want to jump to, um, let's say N, capital N, all right? So here, what I can do is just say F and then N, and I can jump right there. Right, so I'm not thinking in terms of characters, I'm more thinking in terms of words, paragraphs, and specific targets. One thing you can also do is add counts, right? So again, let's say I'm in this line here, and I want to jump to, let's say, line number six here, uh, or six lines down. And yes, you can go like, you know, J, and then until you get down there. But we want to use better emotions, right? So we can press six, and then J, and you're all the way down there. And that's the thing. You have to kind of remember to use counts. It's a bit tricky when you start, but if you keep asking the question, is there a better way to get there? Eventually develop some muscle memory and you'll be able to do it kind of uh, without thinking much. Number two is you're forgetting to use counts. So you learned that, for example, DW deletes a word, right? Now you need to delete three words. Most beginners will end up doing DW three times. And this is inefficient and you probably should be using counts instead. So by that I mean doing like DW, like this, right? This works occasionally, but it's not really the Vim way or the Vim motion way of navigating or editing things, right? So you have to use count or numbers in this case, right? So if you want to remove three words, you can do D three words and that will remove three words for you. But the trick is to remember to add a count. And one thing in, in Vim or in like Vim motions, the syntax usually looks like this. So you have a count and then you have some sort of an operator, like delete, for example, and then you get the motion itself. And count works with pretty much all of these things, so with any operator. So you can like delete, you can visually select, you can whatever. So count, operator, motion. Always remember that you can add a count before an operator, and that would save you so much time when you get used to it. I guess the trick is to just keep asking yourself, can I use a count? Every time you're trying to do something that is kind of repetitive, ask the question, can I use a count? And if the answer is yes, just figure out the number. At first, it's going to be slow, but then with time, you develop the muscle memory again, and it becomes so much faster. Number three, you're ignoring capital variance. So essentially, you've learned that you can use W, B, and E to kind of move between words and things like that. So there's also the capital ones of these things. If you look at here, for example, um, let's say I'm here. You've you've learned that you can do W and E, right? But there's also the capital characters. You can do W, a capital W, and like capital B, and then essentially the you know the normal W or the not non-capital W will stop at punctuations, but the capital one will stop at white spaces, and so on and so forth. You can do like capital J to go all the way down and JJ to go all the way up. And the idea here is to remember there's more than this the one we're used to. It's kind of weird, but you can get used to it as well. There's the capital ones. Always remember that. And it just takes practice, as I said. Next, you're falling back to using your mouse. And there's nothing wrong with this, but every time you do so, you're pretty much breaking the flow state. So anytime you're coding, you're thinking about a couple things, but the two things happening there is like you're writing your code, and also you're thinking about the different commands you can be running to navigate and edit the code. If you switch to your mouse, your hand leaves the home row and now you're pretty much using the traditional way of navigating things. You're scrolling up and down and selecting and all of that stuff. This is okay sometimes, but you need to get used to using the commands first and uh, the motions. And so to do so, you can just deactivate mouse, the mouse in your configuration. And then once you get used to doing everything in your keyboard, only then kind of activate it again. 
Next, number five, you're underusing text objects. Now, text objects are not just motions, they're more about like uh, regions and they're typically used after an operator. As an example, you can, in this code here, you can do something like delete inner and then curly brackets. That would delete everything inside of the brackets and then put you back in visual mode. If you want to go back to insert mode, you can say something like CI, which is like change inner and then bracket, and that would delete everything and put you back in insert mode. And you can do the same with like V, for example, like V or like visually select inner and then brackets that would select everything inside of the brackets. And so remember, like anytime you're trying to do something like that, think if you can use something like text objects, like can you do something like that, right? It's way faster and it's more accurate as well if you're trying to do some specific thing. And so remember that one of the trickiest things to remember here is that you have I and A. I is inner and A is around. Remember those two words and it becomes a bit easier for you to do, to use more of the text objects. Next, number six, you're not using enough search-based motions. And by that, I mean you're not using the F or T or searching for patterns. So for example, say you're on this word here, you know, format two bytes, and I want to jump to the character B here. What you can do is F and then capital B, and that will jump right there. And if you want to go to the character before that one, you can say something like T and then capital B, and that will jump to the character right before that one. Now, say you're trying to get to a place a bit further down, for example, and let's say it's this word here, CTX, and you're still on this word here, you can use patterns, right? So backslash, and then you can type CTX, and then we'll take you right there. But say you want to jump to the next occurrence of that one, you can press N. If you want to go backward, you can press capital N. Now, if you are here, and let's say we have F and then A, to navigate these ones, when it comes to like F and T, you can do something like semicolon or like comma to go back. Now, again, remember in previous pitfalls here that I mentioned, you can use the capital variants of these ones. So if you use capital F here and then say F, that will go backward. So if you use F and T, that will move forward or like to the right side and use the capital uh, version of those ones, you, you kind of go backward. Okay, so remember to think in terms of like search-based motions. Can you search for something quickly that way before you start pressing H and L to try to get there? Next, number seven, you're ignoring the repeat operator. And by that, I mean the dot command. So the dot command repeats the last change, and this includes the operator plus the motion combination. So for example, say we're on this line, uh, number 39 here, and I do something like DI and then parentheses. That would remove everything within the parentheses, right? So if I press dot here, that does the same exact thing. And for example, DAP, that would remove a parameter. If I press dot, that would remove the next one. Right, so remember to use a dot command. And before you start thinking about macros, you probably can do the thing you're trying to do with just the dot command. So always try to think if you can do that. And it's actually easy because you can do something like dot dot, and then if you don't like it, just pressing U, it goes back or undo it, and then you're back. So before you start thinking about creating those complicated macros, maybe the dot command can do the job for you. Next, number eight, you're not using jump list enough. So things like searching for patterns or searching for exact characters and on the current line or even searching in general, like these get added to the jump list. And jump list is just a way that Vim uses to track the different positions you're in. So let's say I'm here and I press capital J. It goes all the way down to the last line. If I want to go back to the exact line I was in, I can just do something like control O or control I to go back, right? So control O and control I will kind of jump between the different places you're in. This is super useful because you can always go back to the exact location and continue working. Let's say you're referencing a function somewhere else. You can just press Ctrl O, Ctrl I, and just jump between the two. Next, you're underusing Vim marks. So Vim marks is Vim's way to bookmark a line or a specific location. And there's so many things you can do with it. But for this example, let me show you how it works. So if I press M A here, notice what happens. There's like a character A here. And this is just Vim telling me that I'm adding a bookmark for this line. Now, if I go here, for example, and do ms, um, setting a bookmark here on this line, it adds s here, so that's like my next bookmark, right? So if I press a single column here, that's what happens. It shows me a list of all the different kind of bookmarks I have. And if I press um, this one again, and then a, I go back to the bookmark a, and then 
as I go to the other one. Now, notice something here. It took me to the line, but it didn't take me to the specific location. To the, go to the specific location, you can use this one. I don't even know what this is called. And then you can press A. It takes you to the exact location you bookmarked it in. And this thing. And then S. It goes to the other one here. So this is super useful. Let's say you're in, you have two different files and you add a bookmark in each. You can jump back and forth quickly and then, you know, stay locked in, essentially. To delete all the bookmarks that you have here, you can do something like deal, uh, delete marks, and then A, Z. That would remove essentially all the bookmarks you have if they're lowercase. Finally, for number 10, take the time to read the docs. So if you're in Vim, if you press an H here, you can search for different docs. If you type in motions.txt, here you can read everything you need to know about the motions. And my recommendation is to kind of learn the most important ones first that will let you kind of uh, move forward and then start learning new things and adding them to your workflow. This is super cool and you can search for pretty much any documentation that Vim has. Highly recommended. Take the time to do so. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video. Please let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a more detailed Vim motions video. And Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.